Hi everyone, welcome to the Bioinformatics Schools channel. In today's video, I am going to show you how you can read VCF files using the tool BCF Tools. BCF Tools is one of many tools that are used for reading and manipulating VCF files. So make sure you monitor this channel as I'll be uploading more content on how to use these tools to read VCF files. Now, before we proceed, it's important that you also read about BCF tools and get instructions on how to use them. And so, visit this page here that I'm showing, okay, and then you'll be able to get um, instructions for using BCF tools. I'll leave the link to this page in the description box. you use a few of the commands here because this is an intro video, so take note of that. You also need to make sure you have installed BCF tools. Okay, so installing BCF tools is simple and straightforward. You can install using Anaconda or building from source. And I have covered two videos on how to install BCF tools using these two approaches. So just watch them. The links to those videos are in the description box. The first thing we have to do is to download an example data. So I have a number of VCF files on my GitHub repo. So just go there. The link to the GitHub page Will be given in the description box so just use the link so we will use this file here all.snips in dels.vcf.dz that is what we are going to download let me also say that the data sets here were prepared using vcf files from the thousand genus projects so in case you are interested in the original uh, files there's the page i will leave the link to this page in the description box so just go there and then just check them out so i downloaded the data sets here I downsampled and then merged them, okay, to get what I have on my GitHub page. Let me also say that these files here are very heavy, so yes, take notes. So the files here are very, very small, okay, so you can download them quickly and then just um, use them on your PC, okay, without any challenge. And these are small files, so you can um, download and use them on your ordinary PC. And then also use them well, you don't have to use any um, high-end pc for this exercise so we will download this one here all.snips in dels.vcf.gz that is what we are going to download so first click on it and then after clicking go to the right side just follow my cursor come to this side and you have a download button here if you are using the browser to download just click this download button and then just save it okay so there's one way of saving it so i'll show you the other one soon so once you save it just save it on your pc anywhere is fine just make sure that the place you are saving is accessible the other way is to use the download link okay this comes in handy if you are working on a remote server where you have access to only the terminal or the command line then this one is important so on your browser I am using Firefox by the way. To get the download link, I'll right click it and then I'll copy the link. Okay, I'm sure this procedure will also work for other browsers. So just right click it and then just copy the link. I'm just repeating again. So once you are done with this, it's now time to go to the terminal and then download the file. So let's go to the terminal and continue from there. So on the terminal, the first thing I will do is to create a working directory. So I will say make the VCFs. I will then cd to it. The reason why I do this is to separate files that I'll be generating for this exercise from other files on my PC. Okay, so doing this helps you to organize your files and prevent accidental removal of files and modification of files. So that is why I create directories for every project that I do. So now it's time to download the data. So I will use reget for it. So I'll say reget and I'll supply it with the download link of the file, the VCF file. And then I'll run it. Please take note that aside we get there are other tools that can help you to download files from the internet. Okay, so just use an appropriate tool to get your data 
downloaded. So let's run this command. So now the data has been downloaded. Let's first clear the screen and continue. Now let's check the file. We use ls to do it. So we have the file there. Now it's time to look at some of the BCF tools command. I will try with a few of them because this video is an introductory one. So uh, detailed videos are already in a playlist. So you can just watch them after this video. Now let's proceed. So with VCF files, one of the things we do, okay, before actually manipulating um, them is to do an indexing. Okay, so indexing helps the programs to do a faster lookup of features and other information in the file. So we will look at that. So you will first look at indexing a VCF file using VCF tools. I will give you two ways of doing it. So let's look at the first one, which is the default um, configuration or settings for BCF tools. So you say BCF tools index, and then we specify the VCF file, which is this one, and we run it. Once it's done, when you do an ls, you will find this file here. This is the indexed file. Okay, so this is what will be used to make um, lookups faster. Okay, so there's one type of index file. There's another type, which is the .tbi um, format. So we'll try with that one as well. So that one also works. So we can say BCF tools index, we specify it's here rather. Right so BCF tools index, and then we say dash T. Okay, and then we specify the VCF file like this one. So we do this and then we just run it. So this will give you another uh, type of index file. So do an ls and you will find that file also here. Okay, so these are the two ways that um, we use to um, do indexing in BCF tools. So if you want to look up the indexing um, options in BCF tools, you can just go to the manual page and just check them out. But with these two, any of them should be fine uh, when working with them. So this is indexing. Let's look at another command. So with VCFS, you can query and find the samples, okay, and display the samples um, in the VCFR. When I say samples, I mean the sample IDs or sample names. So we use BCF tools query to do that. So let's look at that. So we can say BCF tools query dash L, and then we specify the VCF file. So this command will display the samples there. So let's run it. So we have the samples here. So notice them here. Okay, so this is how you query and then display samples in a VCF file. So these are the two commands that I thought I will show you for now and then you can just um, practice. Okay, so that's how we do it. Aside, you using files that has been downloaded locally for you. You can also do queries for files that are on a remote server. Okay, so if the file, the VCF file that you want to use, it's on a remote server, you, you can still use it by just supplying the link to the file. So let's look at another example here. Let's go to the FTP site for the 1000 Genomes project. Okay, so let's try with this one here, this file here, the chromosome one. Let's look at how we can query and then find the sample like this in this file. So we need the link. So you have to just right click it. I am using a Firefox, but you can just use any other browser to and get the link. So we just copy the link here. Again, I'll say right click it. Just uh, copy the link and then just go and then use that link. So that is what we are going to do next. So to do the query, okay, to supply this information, we can say BCF tools query dash L and we supply it with the link. So let's paste the link there and then we just run it. This should also work for you. So let's run this and then let's see how it goes.
But of course, this file is heavy, and so it will take some time um, to get the sample list. Okay, so it depends on the internet speed and all that. Um, it might take some time, but it should be able to do it quickly for you because the files are on a remote server anyway. So let's wait whilst it displays the sample like this. Okay, so there we go. The samples have been displayed for us. So there's another way to um, run VCF tools and supply a VCF file. Okay, so that's how we do it. Let's clear the screen and then proceed. Now, with this link here, instead of using this link in its entirety, you can just assign it to a variable and then just call that variable when calling the VCF tools. Okay, so let's look at that and then we wrap up this tutorial. So let's clear this. The reason why I'm showing you this is that if let's say you are going to use this um, link a number of times, then always putting this full link there might be cumbersome. So to assign this link to a variable, you can say link equals, and then you supply it with a link and then you just uh, run it. Let's print it. You can see echo dollar link is there. So now you can say BCF tools query dash L and you say dollar link. Okay, let me say that um, with bash, the dollar sign here attached to this variable name indicates that we want the actual value. Okay, so that is why we do this. So let's run this. Okay, so this has also been done for us nicely. Okay, so this is how we do it. Now, this tutorial I gave is just an intro. And so I will encourage you to watch videos in this playlist I am showing right now. So these videos go into details. And so just watch them and learn how to manipulate VCFRs using VCF tools. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next session. Goodbye.